Hi, I'm Max Kaiser. Welcome to the Kaiser Report. First order of business. This Saturday will be the second anniversary of the first dedicated crash JP Morgan by Silver edition of the Kaiser Report. So make sure you f***ing tune in! Oops! I swore like a bankster. My banker Tourette syndrome is back. Even mentioning Jamie Fleepin' Diamond. Jamie, I'm too scared to appear on the Kaiser Report. Diamond has given me frickin' bash flax. Or I'd say, say flashbacks to being a foul mouth bleeping banker. I can't stop bleeping swearing. Stacy. <laughs> as long as you didn't act like an Oppenheimer banker on a plane. Oh, that guy who pooped everywhere in first class? <laughs> that was classy. Yeah, Oppenheimer. <laughs> I used to work for them. You know, we did mention a few months ago that every time we tried to cover um, various stories of selling various collateralized debt obligations that are, quote, uh, we'll say poopy, okay? We can never repeat these banker emails because they're so foul-mouthed. Well, in our first headline, Max, foul-mouthed foreigner threatens workers and warns he will hunt down their families. So let's look at this video, Max, of Olivier Debar. He's from Barclays Bank, senior forex trader for Asia, or he was until he was fired. Here he is confronting construction workers near his house when they woke him up too early. I'm gonna go after you. I'm gonna burn your house down with the fucking people in it. You know what? You have no respect to people. Fucking animals. Chinese fucking animals. My family lives here. <laughs> yeah, that looks like a typical brokerage office. But, you know, this is why London is dropping down from being the world's financial center. Uh, it's going to lose that top spot to New York, Hong Kong, and even Frankfurt will overtake London in a few short years. So this is why they, they're acting out their pathological, social, they need to, what do you call a social order, anti-social behavior order. Asbo. Yeah, the guy is uh, a menace. Well, as you said, London is apparently going down the, the ranks of, of financial centers. It's down to just like a third in terms of income and revenue to the, to the revenue office here, the Inland Revenue, um, in the last three years. Now, that sort of behavior that you saw there, for any New Yorker, that's, you encounter that well, several times. Our campaign is working. We're decapitalizing the banksters. Their bonuses are being slashed. Their pay is being slashed. They're being penalized. They're being decapitalized. Uh, they're, they're sinking into the muck, which is great. We got a front row view on London collapsing, the city of London. That, our campaign is working. That's the whole buy silver crash JP Morgan is working. As the silver's being taken off the physical market, these banks have had to cover their balance sheets in other ways, which result in firing bankers. That's the goal. Get rid of them. So let's move on to some more foul mouthed, this time not foreigners, but domestic workers. I totally bleeped with the Palo market today, damning emails of Barclays traders boasting about how they rigged energy prices to make profits. So this is in America, Max, and Barclays traders there are also rigging market in a foul-mouthed way. Four traders are accused of conspiring to sell electricity at a loss to drive prices down. This would enable simultaneous bets on falling energy prices to reap huge profits, leading to losses of 86 million pounds for other investors and pension funds. The manipulating prices down, energy prices, people, you know, the uneducated scrub knuckleheads out here will say, oh, that's great, my, you know, b bills are going to be less. But, you know, manipulating prices down, the reason it's preferred over manipulating prices to go higher is because you can use the counterfeiting technique of selling naked short sales, et cetera. And of course, this is uh, debasing the currency, which has the effect of ultimately driving up prices. So the UK consumer now is facing higher energy and food costs in the medium to longer term because the banksters are flooding the market with counterfeit securities and counterfeit pounds. Uh, you know, so this is not adding to their uh, medium term uh, benefit whatsoever. But it sounds superficially like they are benefiting. Uh, and of course, that's the propaganda from banksters is that we're helping you by totally destroying the system. We need to burn the city down to help you. It's, 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 it's absurd. So let's look at this, this practice of forcing prices down in order to gain. Because this is what Barclays did with LIBOR. And then they were forgiven across the world. Evening chat shows with Bill Maher and Jay Leno, they were like bragging, they were making fun of the fact that, oh, gee, what kind of manipulation is that, that we benefit? Like, nobody's benefiting from this, right? Because on the other side, 
capital is being extracted from the system by their big bets on the price dropping, but also it's misallocating capital on the other side because when electricity producers are being given false price signals, what does that do in a capitalist system, Max? Well, it, it causes distortions and, and uh, all kinds of mayhem. But the forcing the price down in this way and it's forcing interest rates down uh, forces companies to hedge the resulting inflation by buying commodities like uh, uh, energy and agricultural commodities, which, of course, have the result of causing social unrest and revolution. So you might uh, un understand this in the following context. The bankers are fostering revolution and it's happening around the world and global insurrection against banker occupation is taking hold uh, in Greece, in Ireland, in countries around Europe, around the world. So they are being hoisted by their own petard. They are causing the revolution. They're being fired wholesale. They're being thrown out into the street because they can't see, you know, uh, the, the, the forest for the trees. They're simply burning down the village to save the village, you know, and that's exactly what's happening. And this is moral hazard in action because the U.S. Department of Justice refuses to prosecute hardcore criminal banksters. They refuse to. So over and over, we see this total hubris that these guys can openly, they openly laid out exactly how they were rigging markets, but filled it with all sorts of expletives, how they were, you know, these, actually these, these traders were also previously at Enron. I remember Enron, famously, those audio tapes emerged where they were bragging about ripping off granny, but in an expletive-filled way. No, they have a banker Tourette syndrome, where <laughs> everything is a freak in this and freak in that, they kill people. So it's no secret that they're in the business of homicidal banking and that their goal is to wipe out the entire population so that they have more to share with themselves. But they don't understand that they're basically shooting themselves in the head that's committing financial suicide. It's financial Harry Carey, financial kamikaze, and we saw that famously on 9-11. The emails sent by Barclays American traders have echoes of the brash messages sent by their counterparts in London who boasted about rigging key interest rates. That was LIBOR. And again, you know, here they act surprised that they sound the same as those emails they sent in, in, in the LIBOR case. Or it sounds the same as those audio messages left 10 years ago by Enron. It sounds the same as those foul-mouthed you know, crazy guy in Singapore. It sounds the same as the expletive-laden emails going around at Goldman Sachs or the London Whale or all these other things. So why do they always act shocked? And why is it always a bad apple with the same shocking behavior that the other banks were doing? Because there's no deterrent for committing criminal behavior and mass financial uh, genocide. There's no deterrent. There's no crime. And uh, what we have here is a system that mimics the World Wide Wrestling Federation so that these bankers who are like Hulk Hogan or, or the old Jesse Ventura come out there on the financial stage and uh, th body slam these markets and they destroy these markets, but they get applauded by the audience, the fish, the, the sheep, the idiots out there behind me who are struggling on a day-to-day -day basis needlessly because their banking overlords are sticking a knife into their back and twisting it. And corporations like the BBC are mired in scandals uh, due to their own uh, weird uh, sense of priorities and they refuse to go after the banksters. So Barclays faces a 270 million pound fine by the US Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. Again, this is close to $500 million. It is interesting, part of the decapitalization of London going on is these huge fines that keep on being opposed upon just conveniently British banks, whether it's Standard Chartered, HSBC, Barclays, you know, notice that Goldman Sachs and all these other banks don't uh, face as many. Oh, well, there's definitely a power move from Wall Street to find all these British banks as a way to downsize the British banking establishment for New York wants to take that business, of course. But when you give a bank like Barclays a 400 billion, million, gazillion dollar fine, pound fine, all they do is they increase, they ratchet up their fraud to pay for the fine. So you're encouraging them to commit fraud because you're not, by giving them a civil penalty, you, what you're saying is, Commit more fraud because that's the GDP of a Britain is bank fraud. We're going to fine you for not committing fraud fast enough. So you have to commit fraud faster to increase the GDP of this country. So we're going to impose a fine on you, Barclays. So go out there and commit fraud more rapidly so that the GDP of the country goes up to bail out George Osborne this quarter. So we have more bankers in the news. And this is a female banker in Spain 
the Bankia banker who didn't understand anything. A former director of the banking giant whose implosion forced Spain to seek a 100 billion euro bank bailout has admitted she doesn't know anything about finance. <laughs> Her, her name, Max, is Mercedes Rojo Izquierdo, who was paid 374,000 euros by Banky in 2011. And she said in a testimony before a criminal court in Madrid that she had qualifications in chemistry. Nothing. She didn't know anything about banking, so don't sue her. <laughs> well, the, the, she's being honest, and she's representative of the industry. If you gave a simple test to bankers in the city of London or around the world, for example, ask them a simple question like, what's the relationship between bond prices and interest rates? 95% of those in the industry would not be able to answer that question. Ask them what a short sale is. 95% of the industry would have no idea how to answer that question. Ask them what a naked short sale is. 99.9999% uh, of the industry would have no idea what that means. I mean, this is the only industry in the world that rewards, you know, stu stupidification. <laughs> and the stupider you are, the higher up you, ra you raise uh, in the organization because then the culpability factor is shifted from the organization of the bank to society at large in the form of higher taxes, more austerity measures, because we, after all, we can't um, fire any of these stupid bankers because then it would be in violation of a scheme that protects uh, those with uh, infirmities. So finally, there's a new campaign that was launched in America this past week end, and that is the People's Bailout. Occupy Wall Street is launching the Rolling Jubilee, and it is going to start buying distressed debt, medical bills, student loans, etc., in order to forgive it. As a test run, we spent $500, which bought us $14,000 of distressed debt. We then erased that debt. So that's a return on investment of 30 to 1. Max, you created Karma Bank, which was uh, a way to combine short sales and boycotts to drive a price of a, the stock price down of a company that activists felt were doing wrong. What do you think of this as financial activism? It's reverse vulture capitalism. So it's, uh, it, it's fighting capitalism with capitalism, it's fighting fire with fire. It's a brilliant idea. You know, let's try to support it as much as possible. What's it called, the campaign? This is the Rolling Jubilee. Rolling Jubilee. Rolling Jubilee. It's fantastic. Get behind it. Maybe do some crowdfunding to raise money to retire more of this debt using reverse vulture capitalism. All oh, right, Stacey Herbert, thanks so much for being on the Kaiser Report. Thank you, Max. Stay tuned for the second half. I'll be talking exclusively to Terry Buell about her investigation into fraud at SunTrust Bank. Hi, I'm Max Kaiser. Welcome back to the Kaiser Report. Time now to go to New York and speak with investigative journalist Terry Buell. You can find all of the smash mouth investigative journalism of Terry Buell at terrybuell.com. Terry Buell, welcome back to the Kaiser Report. Hi, Max. It's great to see you. All right, Terry, you are out with a new investigative piece called Regulators Investigate SunTrust Bank for Fraud. Tell us about SunTrust, the agency shortcut mortgage and how this fraud operated. Sure, Max. Uh, you know, th this is a, is a scam that I've been watching for over a year now, and, and I think it's almost as big as, as the LIBAR scam that you've been talking about for quite a while now. Um, SunTrust Bank is a mid-sized American bank, used to compete with Countrywide and Wells Fargo, and whistleblowers have come forward now and submitted a claim to the bank's regulators and said for at least two years, from 2006 to the beginning of 2008, they were literally cheating and manipulating a direct lending system into Fannie Mae. Fannie Mae is a government-sponsored bank that buys wholesale mortgages from banks, right? The one that was bailed out for hundreds of billions of dollars. So the SEC is currently sitting on information that billions and billions of loans were sold to Fannie Mae as prime, as really, you know, good loans, but they were really Alte loans. And now these billions and billions of loans have been defaulting. Prime is really, you know, good loans. They're not the only ones doing it. Uh, Countrywide was also sued by the Department of Justice just two weeks ago, and I believe Wells Fargo is gonna be next. So besides the fact that these banks cheated, what's a little scary and what the SEC is looking at is how long did the, did the GSEs, did Fannie Mae know that the banks were cheating them? So, Terry, can you go into uh, some details as to the fraud itself? The, these are, uh, these are going to end up being putbacks that will cost the bank some money. Uh, any idea what the size of the scam was in dollar terms and what the potential liability could be for the bank? Sure. 
So right now, uh, SunTrust admitted in their last third quarter filings that at least six billion loans have been requested to be bought back. And since most of their business is done with Fannie, Way, Fannie Mae, we can assume most of that went to them. Um, they've only paid back actually 1.4 billion. Okay, so total loans that, that, that they did with Fannie Mae over this time period were hundreds of billions. If, if the SEC you know, sues and settles, we, we have no idea how large the impact could actually be, but it, it would be hefty. Um, you know, what, what the traders were doing is that they would re-enter income and assets into this direct computer system that fed directly into Fannie Mae, and they set it up assuming that the bank had already approved that these loans were good, that they were prime, so we don't need like human beings in the process to check any documents and to see if any of the income and the assets are actually true, okay? So they, they would sit there and, and say they figure out someone has a good credit score, right? They would enter that someone had, uh, like a hairdresser was making $100,000 a year. And if that wasn't enough, then they would just re-enter that the hairdresser was making $125,000 a year. And they were allowed to do this multiple times, like up to 15 times. So, Terry, you're talking about uh, another bank scandal. It involves Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, we, we know now, uh, were uh, managed by folks that were involved in serial fraud. Uh, we know that the government has had to take the liabilities of these institutions on their own balance sheet, adding $5 trillion worth of debt to the federal debt. I can only assume if the story continues as we've seen these stories progress so far that the bank will be given a, some kind of civil penalty, which will be about 10 percent of the amount of the fraud, which, which just is a signal to them from Barack Obama and the Justice Department to please committing bank fraud because we love the way you break the law, right? You're very close. Actually, I bet they pay maybe like 2 percent, <laughs> like a 2 percent fee on the dollar. And then the yes, and when they settle with the SEC, right? Unless there's a criminal case, they're not admitting any wrongdoing. So how culpable is the SEC and the DOJ in this? And why? I mean, this is the most inquest, important question. Why is Fannie Mae not in trouble for the same thing? I mean, they allowed it to happen. I realize that the SEC did actually sue individually Daniel Mudd. He was the former CEO of Fannie Mae, and that that lawsuit is going forward in court. The SEC beat the motion to dismiss, to dismiss, so maybe there's a little bit of hope there. But there should be much larger penalties for all of those GSE executives who allowed this to happen. Because who's paying for it, Max? The American taxpayer. So what? So now we're paying the SEC to like not do their job, basically? Right. Well, the SEC famously is caught surfing the Internet for porno all day. So we're subsidizing a bunch of bureaucrats to whack off to porn while the banking system implodes due to massive fraud. Now, when you mentioned SunTrust Bank, I immediately thought to my days on Wall Street in the 1980s because I used to do work with and have clients of executives at SunTrust uh, when they were embroiled in massive banking frauds and scandals back in the 80s. So this is a, a, a storied bank that oh can't God. seem to, uh, you know, it seems to break, it will break the law, you know, going to the bathroom. It can't seem not to break law. Uh, they're famous, of course, for their relationship to Coca-Cola, their Coca-Cola's bank. They took Coca-Cola public yeah. in 1919. Uh, they just sold off You're the right. last of their Coca-Cola shares last year, uh, presumably to pay um, for more CIA investigative criminal activity that they sponsor. Uh, can SunTrust now survive without the Coca-Cola stock and without the funneling its fraud to the taxpayer? So they've gotten okay, rid of that's their- that's a good question. Yeah, they got rid of their cash. So- Yeah, go ahead. They did that last quarter, Max, to help uh, make their earnings look better, okay? So they don't have any more Coca-Cola stock to sell, right? They just added on another 400 million of, uh, they call them putback requests from the GSEs, right? So <laughs> what are they gonna do? Here's something interesting. I, I was looking into some old stories. In 2006, the SEC actually cleared them of an investigation this is the exact time that they were committing this fraud against the GSEs. It's, it's absolutely unbelievable. Here's something else. They went out publicly and said, we think these are the last putback requests we're ever gonna get from the GSEs because all of a sudden we finally actually reviewed the loan files. It's a joke, I don't believe them. I, I don't think they're telling the truth. I don't think that they've disclosed this SEC investigation to their investors yet. I, I think that's a huge problem. And, and this is a bank who's actually, unlike, unlike Wells Fargo, who's had to pay some fines, right? Unlike Countrywide and Bank of America, who have had to pay a lot of fines, um, they haven't had to pay any fines yet. Why is that? Well, I guess the difference is that 
the Obama administration believes in illegitimate financial rape, and then the GOP would believe, like Todd Akin, in legitimate financial rape. That seems to be the only difference between the two parties these days. Now, J.P. Morgan, another financial terrorist, uh, they're back in the news. Uh, they're in the, uh, relating to a story that you first broke right here on the Kaiser Report two years ago. Terry Buell, tell us we about did. it. Okay, so this morning, uh, J.P. Morgan finally filed a document with the SEC and said, uh, hello, shareholders. We're admitting that all that stuff that Tom Morano, who was at Bear Stearns, the head of the mortgage traders, all that money that they literally stole from their own clients, right? Um, well, that, that was kind of illegal. So we're not, we're not gonna admit any wrong, right? But we, we are gonna settle with the SEC. Now, this is the first time JP Morgan's really coming out and absolutely saying, yes, the SEC's been investigating us. Uh, you and I reported this the day my first story uh, broke at the Atlantic, in, it's like January 25th, 2011, you put on your website that the SEC would investigate this. And they are. Um, what's really interesting here is so how the settlement's gonna work, right? I mean, it's probably only gonna be for a few hundred million dollars and considering the New York AG sued them for $22 billion, that, that's just a joke. I mean, that's a sneeze, right? If, if they put this money, if the SEC, there's some, the Sarbanes-Oxley uh, you know, Act actually set up something called the Fair Fund. So the, the SEC has a mechanism to take this money that they get from JP Morgan, okay, and put it into the Fair Fund, which would direct it back to the mortgage-backed security trust, and then it can be doled out to investors. Now, if they just put it into the general fund, I mean, that's just like, <laughs> I don't, that's like all, all the monolines who did all the discovery work and found all the whistleblowers to out this fraud. That's like they're just taking money from them. It's ridiculous. And if they put it back into the trust, since JP Morgan is not gonna be admitting fraud, right? That would at least be some sort of a signal to the market and hopefully to some of the federal judges ruling on this case that yeah, JP Morgan did something wrong. And you know what's even sad, sadder today? I, I guess the Wall Street Journal has some editorial opinion piece that J.P. Morgan's the victim here because they were forced to buy Bear Stearns. I don't believe that. You know why I don't believe that? Because it's just simple, Max. J.P. Morgan was Bear Stearns' clearing agent. That means they saw all the toxic mortgage-backed securities going through the system and being sold and bought way before they bought them. They knew they were buying crap. Yeah, no, no question about it. Uh, you know, Jamie Dimon plays the victim card. And, you know, the fact is that when they went through the 2008 period and they were caught stealing, uh, manipulating markets, uh, rigging markets, engaged in massive fraud, uh, you know, the government turned around and said, wait a minute, we're going to stop you from rearranging your balance sheet for the time being uh, while we try to sort this out. Here we are four or five years later. All the crimes at J.P. Morgan are continuing apace, uninterrupted, more massive than ever before. And yet the government says, you know what, we're going to let you buy back your stock again. Jamie Dimon, recapitalize your stock. The stock's up a buck and a half. In fact, the problem is on Wall Street in America, if you're a genocidal maniac, that's a buy. If you're into some kind of <laughs> capitalism and democracy, it's a sell, sell it short. So how can they allow You're right. this but, nightmare but Max, on Wall Street to continue? It, I mean, Barack Obama's back in office. Is, is he going to go down to Wall Street now, spread Jamie's cheeks, and give him no. a big wet kiss again? Or is he going to impose some kind of law and order? Finally, what's going on, Terry Buell? You no. live in that country. Is there going to be any law and order at all? Max, today I'm wearing black for the death of the American investor and any chance to have fair play in the investing market. Because I do not think that Obama can do anything. I do not think the DOJ or the SEC wants to do anything. I mean, the SEC took five years to get this settlement. They didn't do any digging. Why did they take so long? Well, I mean, I, I think we have know, no hope. You know, I, I, would, I would go long chapstick the amount of chapstick that Barack Obama uses to keep his lips moist from kissing Wall Street's ass would drive the price of You're that right. stock higher. This guy is a shameless financial terrorist, the better. And it's just disgrace. And I can't believe that people are not surrounding Wall Street or the White House and demanding they come out with their hands up. This is, a, this is atrocious. Uh, is there going to be any relief at all? We need a people? million man march on the SEC. We need a million man march on the SEC on the New York Fed, right? <laughs> Timothy Geithner's old house, right? 
to sit outside and camp outside until someone is charged criminally. Because let me tell you, this case, this is the case that is a slam dunk to charge Tom Morano, Jeff Versalizer, and Mike Nirenberg for criminal fraud. And I really don't think it's going to happen anymore. And it makes me want to throw up. All right, so Terry, finally, Tim Geithner, terrorist at the Treasury, is leaving. Who's going to take his place? Jamie Dimon? <laughs> you know what, right now, why not? Because uh, Obama's just going to put any friend in there, right, who will do what he tells him what to do. All right, Terry Buell, that's all the time we have. Thanks so much for being once again on the Kaiser Report. Thanks for having me, Max. It's great to see you. All right, and that's going to do it for this edition of the Kaiser Report with me, Max Kaiser, and Stacey Herbert. I want to thank my guest, Terry Buell. You can find her at terrybuell.com. Until next time, Max Kaiser. Say oh, and don't forget to send me an email at kaiserreport at rttv.ru. Bye, y'all.